So welcome everybody to the last uh, presentation session of this fantastic uh, Congress. Uh, following this session, there'll be a closing adjournment session uh, with Annette Flanagan. Um, so appropriately, this session is post-publication issues. We've moved from preprints through to post-publication issues and everything in between. Um, and once the paper's published and all those issues have been resolved, that's really where all of our jobs um, end. So it's a fitting wrap-up, the conference. Our first speaker is Anna Marusic. Um, and the title of her talk is Analysis of Indexing Practices of Corrected and Republished Articles in Medline, Web of Science, and Scopus. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's great to see so many people still at the third day of the conference, uh, a great conference. And I would uh, like at the beginning to acknowledge the contribution of my colleagues, uh, Thea, who works at the uh, research office at uh, my medical school, and uh, Anna Utrobicis, who is the head librarian at our central medical library. The idea for this study came uh, from the recent ICMJ um, revision where in the section on uh, uh, corrections and diversioning uh, there was another element introduced which is a retraction with re re republication which is a way of uh, to correct honest but major errors which change the direction and the conclusions of the study which uh, is uh, which can then be retracted but replaced with a, with a good version with hopefully with explanation of what happened uh, if you look at the fact sheets of the uh, National Library of Medicine, they already have a, a provision for dealing with such articles. They have what is called corrected and republished articles, and then they are indexed. Uh, and what you see when you go to uh, uh, PubMed, uh, you, you will see how it's uh, uh, presented. Hmm? Slides are not moving, but for me it's moving. Okay, okay, so this was the first slide, which was on our screen. Uh, so these are the definitions of the retraction and republication from the ICMJ and uh, the type of publication tag uh, that is available in um, Medline. So our aim was that uh, we see how journals and different indexing um, databases uh, deal with these things. How when you have a retracted publication and you're replacing it, how you see it as an end user? What do you see when you come to the journal or any of these indexing uh, databases? So the sample uh, that we started with, we took uh, 2015 and 2016 because those were the years where you would expect kind of pick up of the ICMJ uh, change in, in the recommendations. So we took all corrected and republished articles indexed by Medline. There were 29 of them. And then we looked at the journals, three databases, and also the cross mark to see how they linked and indexed uh, the uh, retracted and the re republished uh, articles. Uh, for example, when you go to PubMed, this is one of such articles, you will see that there is an erratum, that there is a notice published about what has happened, and also that there, this um, uh, article was corrected and republished with a link to the article, and then you... It's not, it's going too fast. And then you see uh, that it again links to the other articles. So we studied 29 journals, uh, they were, these 29 articles were published in 24 uh, medical journals from different research areas. They were all indexed scopus, some of them not in the web of science, and you see the median impact, which was about three. So when we looked at uh, these uh, characteristics, we saw that uh, out of 29, um, corrected article uh, as a separate article was published in 25 cases. In 15 of them, so half, there was a separate item that told the reader what everything was about. And in 15 only, the correction was also indicated in the republished article. I have to be very careful with pressing this. When we looked at cross-mark information, we found it uh, in 17 of them. And in 10 of them, this cross-mark notification linked to the correction notification or replaced article. So for us, it was really, for me personally, it was a frustration that when you open a cross-mark tag, you don't see easily what has happened with this article. For example, this is an, a study from The Lancet. When you click on the cross-mark uh, uh, icon there, you just see document is current. 
it doesn't say it's current, it's a revised version or whatever, replaced version. You have to open the more information tag down there to see that there are uh, other publications linked to it, this article, then the editorial linked to it, then the citing article, and only this one, and you have to copy each of these DOIs and look for them, it's a notice of replacement. So it's really not clear for the end user what's going on. When we looked at uh, Web of Science and Scopus, uh, we found that not all original articles were indexed, and when we looked at how the corrected articles was indexed, it was indexed as article, but not in all the cases. It was indexed as article or retracted publications in two cases in Web of Science. You had them as corrections, you had them as errata in Scopus. There were even editorial material, a reprint review. So there was inconsistency in indexing uh, these uh, published items. When you looked at uh, whether there are links, so we found only in 12 out of 27 in Web of Science and in 8 in Scopus that the corrected article links to the original articles. Uh, they uh, also index rather uh, uh, consistently the uh, items that indicated this correction. And also, uh, only in some of the cases, this separate item indicated the correction and linked it uh, to the original article. Uh, and when you look at the citations, uh, the citations to the original and to the retracted and to the new replaced articles were the same in both the Web of Science and uh, the Scopus. And then we have another case because uh, during the review process we were asked are there any GEMMA articles in there and they were not indexed, although the GEMMA has published this type of article, they were not indexed as such in the NLM, but when we searched uh, PubMed as retraction and replacement, not corrected and replaced, uh, then we found five articles published in GEMMA from 2014, but they were tagged only as retracted publication, not as corrected and, and uh, republished, uh, replaced articles. So uh, Web of Science and Scopus indexed all of them and they were kind of, again, a little bit inconsistently indexed. So for example, when you go to the PubMed and you look for one of these articles in the GEMMA, you see that it is a retraction of and that the publication type down there is uh, re retraction of publication. Uh, to the notice, and when you go to the actual article, which links uh, from here, you see that it is a retracted article. Although you see in the table that there is a retraction, there is a notice of retraction and replacement, but for someone who is looking at here, they would just see a retracted article. Although when you go to the website of uh, the journal, you see that um, this uh, clear warning that this article has been retracted and replaced, and this is a notice which indicates, again, then links uh, to the correct article. So the conclusion from our study seems to be that there is a large variation of how journals, indexing databases, and other publishing services like Crossref provide um, us with the information about these articles. Uh, so the user, when they come and search, they would get three identical articles. One of them would be retracted, one of them would be republished, and one would be a notice which may not be indexed as a notice, but it's something else. So obviously this diminishes the credibility and transparency of this important correction of uh, literature. And our um, argument and advice that if we are going this way, then we have to really appropriately index, interlink, update, and amend uh, these changes in literature. But I, I emphasize here appropriately because what we have now is seemingly some um, connection and uh, combinations, but not clear enough for the end user to understand what has happened uh, with the article. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna, and you are very timely, so we have lots of time for questions. Oh, goodness, somebody really tall before. Uh, I'm Hilda Bastian from PubMed Commons. Um, that was great. Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, and that's going to be really helpful for us because we're going through a process of trying to uh, identify all of these uh, at uh, PubMed, which is a slow, painful, uh, slow, painful process. Um, you were showing a whole lot of different ways that people deal with it. Uh, did you have a, a, a kind of like a way that you would you would most prefer that it was shown? Did you, was there sort of some example that you thought 
This is a really good example, and I okay. wish everybody did this. I don't have any conflict uh, in regard to what I'm going to say now, except that I'm editor of a journal that is indexed in uh, uh, Medline, but I like the Medline way. I think the NLM does it really well with interlinking. I, there obviously has to be the, the reason why the JAMA papers were not indexed. And also, of course, we didn't go into the DOIs things because, you know, some journals have the same DOI, some don't, and whether that makes a difference. I think we, we're really struggling in, in this field and, and uh, as a kind of publishing or a, a editor person, I think that we still live in the paper age. That still we think in paper and that we're not using the what digital technology can offer us to really do what we want to do. You know, the transparency is really lagging behind in a way how we present information both in journal and in indexing agency. I think that indexing agency and cross I was most surprised by cross mark that I don't see right away that this is a correction from something. So I think they, they, all of these stakeholders need to get together and see the best way for the poor guy who goes to the web and searches indexes and sees uh, all kinds of different information and it confuses them and you see it in citations, which may be because they cited the previous and then they cited a new one, but still I think it's, it's important and, and serious confusion uh, that is at least now, take this as a baseline and see how we can best work on the ICNJ recommendation. Okay, there's a question there, Ivan. Um, yeah, Ivan Oransky from Refraction Watch. Um, so uh, a plug quickly. Uh, we are, of course, gathering, as many of you know, a, our own database of retractions, which um, we hope will take advantage of your great work here, uh, retractiondatabase.org. It's available but not complete yet. Um, I'm wondering if... Um, you know, the DOIs and the, uh, do, do you sort of have a sense, not, not to put you on the spot, but of sort of best practice in, in terms of DOIs? Because we're struggling with that because we have two case, we have two use cases where we really are not quite clear how to deal with it, um, to be honest. Uh, we have ideas, but one is um, articles that actually never had a DOI to begin with. Um, and so, Obviously, if they didn't have a DOI, it's very unlikely that the retraction notice or the correction notice will have a DOI. Um, and then, of course, there's where the journal just uses, the publisher uses the same DOI, mm -hmm. uh, which we think adds to the confusion. Um, and we're wondering if... You know, yeah, I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm as much not confused, but I, I don't know the solution because, because if it is replaced, so it was retracted and replaced, it is in a way logical to have the same DOI. Why, you know, punish the authors? Or maybe they would, they would then have two articles, you know, they, they would count as two for them. Um, and I know that uh, some of the Lancet papers that we saw have the same DOIs. So I'm not quite sure. They know better, perhaps, you know, the, the providers of these services know better than we do, or maybe ICMJ can come with some kind of recommendation or other, you know, uh, people who have more experience, you know. I, I never did such a uh, retraction and replacement in my journal, so I'm sure that they have experience for this. Maybe Annette there is <laughs> the next <laughs> in line for question. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, yes. Go ahead. Okay. Annette, Annette Flanagan, JAMA and the JAMA Network. Um, thank you, Anna. Um, really important uh, work that you did, you did there. Um, I, you, we've been in discussion with, and there are several NLM colleagues here in the room, about this idea of uh, how to handle retraction and replacement, which is a new animal. So JAMA's called it retraction and replacement. Lancet has called it retraction and republication. Um, and we feel it's really important when there is honest, inadvertent error um, to not stigmatize the authors uh, and to give them a chance to have their art, and the science is still valid, to have their article uh, retain its former metrics uh, and continue in, in its path uh, as part of the the journey of, of this, the science being used and, and used and reused and maybe reproduced. So that's our thinking behind it, and that is why we keep one DOI um, uh, for now. And um, I'm hoping that NLM will um, grow with us and uh, f find a way to deal with this, this new animal. Yeah. I hope that people from um, Clarivate Analytics and also from Elsevier are here to hear this and maybe come together to discuss this. And I agree with you that it's really, it, it would be a shame to penalize the authors for something that we haven't dealt well with because they, you know, they deserve to have a single publication and single uh, metrics around it. 
Yes, Elizabeth Seaver uh, from PLOS. Um, great talk, and I had uh, two questions for you, um, sort of the technical aspects of this. So I've been thinking a lot about retractions and corrections in terms of text and data mining, mm -hmm. but I know it also affects the um, end user. And so I'm wondering, uh, first, uh, what do you see as being sort of the ideal uh, workflow or connections between things for where information lives about articles being uh, corrected or um, retracted in the article itself as um, you know, a, a, a relationship to another um, item? And uh, secondly, uh, how do you see article versioning as maybe fitting into this um, when articles are being sort of replaced in place? Okay, I, I think you know the best thing is to go to the NLM fact sheet and uh, read about article versioning. They they have a, I think a good way of uh, dealing with that. So I would say that article versioning is a different matter, especially for some of the PLOS uh, journals. Uh, but here I think uh, what I've shown both you know from the Lancet and from the German from other journals, keeping this retracted and replaced as one piece and having a notice and then linking to, together is what seems to be the best and what kind of NLM, in a way, although they, they very often uh, have two publications. And we have seen cases where a journal has published a paper uh, twice. <laughs> so they say this one is not valid, you know, and, and they take you to the earlier version. So it can be a publisher's error, uh, which is also covered in, in the NLM description of this corrected and uh, republished article. Thanks. Oh. We, have time for, we have time for one more question. At the, Thanks. Matt Hodgkinson from Hindawi. Um, there's a concept of inline correction as well. So where yes. does the line get drawn between correcting something in line and retracting and republishing? Is there mm -hmm. any actual practical difference or is this just semantics? Uh -huh. And also, is, do you sometimes have a delay between the retraction and the republication mm -hmm. or is it something that's simultaneous? Uh, uh, well, who knows what the future brings us? Maybe we will have these heat prints uh, and living documents, uh, living documents. Um, I don't know w what will happen, but I understand that it could be that Either there is a delay, which can uh, either harm authors or, or create problems on how to cite it, and maybe there is a way that this can be done smoothly uh, inline and online so that there is a transition with some notification that is inline. So thank you. Let's, let's try things. Thank you very much. Thanks. Sorry, I have to leave for my play. <laughs> so I will have to say goodbye to you all. Great <laughs> conference, and thank you, Drama yeah. and Annette.